Greetings, interwebs, this is Jackie K, and I have something a bit different today. I suppose that I haven't already been playing it a whole day. I can consider it as Jackie K tries, but it's not. And I just wanted to show off the game because I feel like talking about it. <laughs> and I might as well take advantage of this feeling to come up with good commentary. You see, the other day, I decided to start playing this game that was downloaded onto my 3DS because of Nintendo promotional things and not. And that game is called Pokemon Shuffle. I feel like I'm going to go over what this game is about, what are the appeals of it, what may not be so appealing about it. Just over the course of a video or two. In the case, the best way I can describe this is it's as a show-off video. So, if you're familiar with Bejeweled, you'll feel right at home with this game. If you play Pokemon Troll today, I haven't played that game, so I couldn't really tell you for sure. But you might get a good feel for it. So, my original plan was to sh show you guys what to do from level to level. But, since of a recording fail, I think I'm going to do it this way. It'll probably allow me to condense things a bit anyways. So, first of all, it's a heart of course. As you can see, we just got a heart. Why, you may ask? Well, as you play these levels, you use a heart every time you go into one. The game starts you off with five hearts, and once you go below five, you actually have the hearts restored once every half hour. But if you get more than five from some method, like buying, using a jewel which you get throughout the game to buy them, or, in some other sense, you have the ability to get multiple hearts. You can't get more than five hearts from just letting time refresh itself. If you have a timer going and you get more than five hearts, that timer goes away, so... That's the reason I do certain things later on. <laughs> It's a common thing in pay-to-play things, but it was annoying at first, and I think I've gotten used to it over time. It keeps me from just playing the game for hours and hours, which in some sense is a good thing. Now let me see if I can find a good tutorial to go over the basics with. I guess since I gotta show things off, I, we can go into this level. Allow me to get the basics out of the way. Before you start a level, you get the option to spend coins on certain events. So far I've been getting 100 each level, so you might notice that I played more than 200, two levels and yet I have only 200. Well that's because the first time I record this, I used this experience boosting power. Because this is the first optimal point in the game where you get a full team of force. You start with just the defaults at first, and then when you have go up against Bulbasaur, you just have Esper to work with. When you catch Bulbasaur, you get the opportunity to use that against Squirtle. Then you face off against Charmander where you use Squirtle and you leave out Bulbasaur because type advantage is a natural thing. But I think this will work and do the trick. Now let's actually go into the level so I can actually start playing the game and playing it. There's a lot to try to condense in a little bit of time. But now I believe we can get into gameplay. So how this works... Like I said, if you play Bejewel you'll probably be right at home. Your ultimate goal is to make matches of threes. Like put three spurs in a row to make a match. When you do, you do damage to this Pokemon up on the top screen, and defeating it is how you beat the level. Your ultimate goal is to try to make as many matches as possible with as many Pokemon. So I could, for example, just match these spurs together, make it three. But there are plenty more opportunities than that. I could bring this a spur over here to make threes out of that and Bulbasaur. 
because they swap places. Or I could actually bring a squirrel down here and swap them around to make a match. What I think I'll do is I'll bring this squirrel where Bulbasaur is and POW! Two in a row. If you match more than three, of course you do more damage. Plus with the cases of Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, they have a special ability that allows them to do even more damage if you make four of a kind. Each Pokemon has an ability like that that you can take advantage of. As you can see, the power four triggered right up there. Asperse is kind of more random where it just will randomly do more damage. See if we make a good chain like that, we can clear the battle in no time. I don't know if it'll let me show off catching a Pokemon since we already... Since I already caught this Eevee. So I'll go over that in the next level. Okay, this is gonna feel a little awkward on me because I am gonna record this right after the opening. Even though I'm gonna be plugging in something before this. I feel the basics really need to be explained before going over this. But I can't skip it and come back to it later. So that Eevee we just fought, in theory at least, drop something. What could it possibly be? It's a jewel! This is uh, an informational thing. This is where we get to the money part, sort of. We're introduced to it without being introduced to the ability to contribute our wallets to it. Jewels are what we use for the in-game shop. Press. As you see for a second, it'll allow you to buy more time to play with the game, more coins that ultimately allow you to do things to improve your ability to battle and catch Pokemon. Right there in the corner is how you contribute money to get more jewels. So if you're familiar with pay and play, you'll already know about this. For some reason we can't do this yet, you have to play a bit more in the game, even though they tell you to do it right away. So if I wanted to, I could buy another heart right now, and play seven more levels without having to wait. However, the one downside to this is when you do go above five hearts, even if you pay for them, that timer that refreshes your heart goes away. You can't get any more hearts until you go below five from just waiting. So, the way I like to play this game, I like to hold off on spending jewels for hearts at least right away. Now, if you're really wanting to catch a rare Pokemon or struggling with a level, you might want to use a jewel for these coins down here. But, like I said, I'm not going to do either. I think we've finally unlocked some other features that I might as well explain while I'm here and starting up a recording just for it. Now if I hit that blue menu, this is your Street Pass feature. When you Street Pass with people, you'll earn rewards from jewels to more hearts. It all depends on various factors. Since this is my recording 3DS and I do have this on my own personal 3DS, I ended up street passing myself, I'm pretty sure. At least we can demonstrate that you get a jewel the first time you street pass. So, if you really don't want to pay money towards this game, there are other options to getting jewels. So it is definitely plausible to get through this game without paying a cent. And I think with the street pass features, it'll allow me to see you what my team currently was when it got street passed. There is another feature that I don't think we have unlocked quite yet. And that's this check-in thing. I do want to get that ASAP, so... Even if I have to make another video, or I'm recording this longer than planning, I'll at least be showing that off before I stop talking about this game. And maybe we'll move on to catching the Pidgey. It'll be in real time next for you guys. But for me, I gotta go back and record that tutorial. So ultimately, with that tutorial out of the way, we can move on to the next level. 
where we'll be facing off against the Pidgey. Now, as you can see, there's a down arrow when we're going up against him, because grass is not good against flying. For those of you who aren't in the Pokemon, no. Type Vanish is taken into consideration here. So, when we were facing off against Bulbasaur, or when we were facing off against Squirtle, using Bulbasaur would allow you to do more damage to it. And the more damage you do, the quicker you can take it out, which increases your odds of catching it. So, let's just dive in. Not gonna use anything this time. We're just gonna go right into things and make the most out of the situation we can. Ah! Ooh. Okay, I guess this is the first time we're being introduced to this concept. Sometimes Pokemon will actually do things to make your matching situation a bit more tricky. And as we're being told, it counts down how long it takes before that's going to happen again. If we make a match right beside it, like if I take this squirt over here and match it, it should break that block. Sometimes the tricks are a bit more complicated than that. Now if I could find a good way to make a match and... If I can make multiple matches in a row, that would be most ideal. Hmm, I'm not sure if I'm going to get... I really quite like that though. So I think I'm just going to make these two for now. I can actually take the Sisper, and that should get rid of the block. And give us a pretty nice combo. <laughs> What's this whole game? I took a while to get into it, but I've really got myself hooked. <laughs> Send hope. But really though. I suppose if nothing else, I can say that it's free to get, so you can always try it, and if you don't like it, you haven't really lost anything besides a little bit of time. Now, I know I can be doing better with my combos than I'm doing, so let's come up with something. Hmm. Okay, this one will match four of a kind. Aha! Here we go. And of course it just hangs up with a sliver of health. Normally, in Pokemon, that would be a good thing, because as you don't catch them if your health runs out. But I'm sure there's plenty of situations in Pokemon where... You think that you got it defeated, but it just barely hangs on. Nevertheless, this should finish it off. Now, that little bit afterwards... As far as I know, it just plays into your points. I'm not positive if it'll play into your rate of catching it at all. But if you're going for a high score, it is good to try it do a combo like that at the end. Ultimately though, you want to get through these levels in as few turns as possible because that's what affects your catch rate. The orange bar is how much it is no matter how well you play, the yellow is a bonus for completing the level quicker though. So it's clearly preferable to go through it quickly. Now the odds are pretty good in our favor, but there are a lot of situations in this game where Pokemon catchability is really low and no matter how good you play, you still won't have good odds in catching it. There are things like a Great Ball, which was shown off in the Eevee level, where if you fail to catch it and you have coins, you can pretty much buy more coins to increase your odds. Unfortunately, I don't think I would going to be that lucky. 